celebration. Jesus is very now I want you to sing it one more time. As I sing, I want you to forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. Please forgive yourself. And forgive those that hurt you. Forgive them. They thought they were hurting your destiny. But God is here to repair every destiny that's been hurt. And maybe you're there in the congregation, you didn't come out, but the Lord is speaking to your condition, situation there. Father, confirm it here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Pastor Piri, please come on over right here. Father, we thank you. We bless your name, O oh God. We exalt your holy name. Blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed they will go, they will be comforted, the comfort of a spirit. Oh, the comfort of a spirit. Comfort of a spirit. Comfort of a spirit. The weights have been taken away. The burden has been lifted. Lifted from off their shoulders. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, as we conclude, I want you to stretch your hands towards our beloved sisters and brother here in front. As our pastors declared, burdens are lifted at Calvary. And right now, every burden will be rolled away in Jesus' name. Just raise your voice as you declare right now. Declare it right now. Every burden is lifted at Calvary. Every burden you presented here is lifted at Calvary. The burden in any life present here, in your own life as well, every burden is lifted at Calvary. Declare it. The Lord has done it. The Lord has done it already. Says it is finished. It is finished. The Lord decreed it on the cross of Calvary. It is finished. The Lord has done it all, everything for everyone. Just decree it as you pray right now. Every burden is lifted at Calvary. Every burden has been lifted at Calvary. The door is wide open. The Lord has set a release right now. Just decree it right now as you pray for them. Release it. Release. Release. Send the power through as you pray for them right now. The Lord has set them free already. The burdens have been lifted at Calvary. Jesus says it is finished. Anything contrary to the plan of God, the promise of God, the purpose of God, and the promise of God for every one of them, it is finished in your own life too as well. In any area of your life, the Lord has decreed it is finished. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, we want to bless your name. We worship you, Lord, because you are still alive and you visit people's lives. Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to us this particular day. Lord, we pray that the word be confirmed in every life in Jesus' name. Lord, we are praying, oh God, that in each one of our lives, oh God, every burden, every yoke, oh Lord, be lifted right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I bring our beloved sisters and our brother in front here, Lord, and any person represented in this audience today. Whatever be their burden, their yoke, Lord, I pray, let it be lifted right now in Jesus' name. Every plant, Lord, they have not planted. In their lives, in their pursuit, in their ministry, oh God, in their careers, in their businesses, Lord, I pray, let all those be uprooted in Jesus' name. We release the power of God upon them right now. Let the healing of God touch them in Jesus' name. Every yoke be broken in Jesus' name. We set them free right now in Jesus' name. Lord, be magnified, oh God. Be exalted, oh God, this very moment, because it is done. 
Lord, we pray for your servant as of using my God to bless us. Lord, we pray for more anointing and power upon him in Jesus' name. As we go, Lord, we are going in the blessing of God. We will never be the same again. Our lives will be fruitful and effective in Jesus' name. The kingdom of God will expand. And your name will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Everywhere we, we go, Almighty God, the glory of God will go with us. Let your name, O Lord, be glorified. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. It is done in Jesus' name. Every burden has been lifted up. God bless you. We're going to remain standing as we share the grace. We can go back. the grace by the count of two. One, two. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go to someone next to you. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. A bigger amen. It will be so in Jesus' name. Look out this week, there are blessings. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Excuses against restitution. You know restitution. You know when you faint. I just told you what I did, and I, you know, made restitution. My conscience became clear, and I could stand before the principal, before anybody, because I made right my way. But you're stealing something, and you've heard about Zacchaeus. For my good, I give to the poor. If I've taken anything from any man by false accusation I restore fourfold but fear frequent excuses against restitution if I do it they will now think I had not been a good person my friend come out true were you a good person if I confess that, if I make restitution for that, they will say, I have been a hypocrite. Okay, what were you? Were you not a hypocrite when you were doing things that you didn't want people to know? And you were proving that I am holy, holy, but you are not holy. Were you not a hypocrite? If I do that, it will lessen my self-esteem before people. The frequent excuses against restitution. Did you have any self-esteem? May the Lord deliver us from all fear in Jesus' name. Amen. You know the people that are giving those excuses, they cannot make right this one. They cannot make right that one. They want to look good, good, good in the presence of people on the final day. All those sins are following after you. All those excuses are following after you. And you, you appear before the great judge 
of heaven and the books are opened and everything you have been saying I can't talk about that I can't confess that I am you know everybody knows I'm too holy I'm too righteous to do that but you are doing it and now you come before the judge of the whole earth and they read everything before the whole world and everybody will know everybody will hear what you have been doing and now there's no chance to prepare there's no chance to make any restitution there's no time to repent and you're lost and lost forever is it not better to jettison to reject all those fears and say lord i come i want to confess what i've done i want to confess what i have been and now I want the mercy of God, the salvation of the Lord, and the Lord will save you in Jesus' name. Now, he tells us in verse 75 that when he has delivered us from fear, he says now that we would live in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives that's what salvation does that now we go out and we live in holiness what's it to be holy what the holiness you're humble without being haughty humble without being haughty you know, those are the people that follow the lord all these religious people who are so proud and pompous and haughty and that's not salvation holiness before the lord means that you are humble and not haughty oh you are obedient and you are not obstinate obedient and not obstinate you see the people who don't care for holiness they say okay i'm doing that thing and they have discovered i'm the one doing it they have discovered that's the way i'm okay since they have known then they become obstinate you see me you detect i'm the one all right i will still do it they become obstinate there's no holiness there those people are just serving themselves they are not serving uh, the lord holiness means that we're obedient we're not obstinate holiness means hell we're loyal we're not lawless loyal not lawless as the lord touches your life and as he turns your life around and as he saves you you are not loyal to the lord and the lord is everywhere the lord is in the market the lord is in the office the lord is in that secret place anywhere you are you remain loyal to him not lawless i you are innocent not injurious you know saul he was injurious that was he said before his conversion before he actually knew the lord he was injurious he harmed people physically harmed people emotionally harmed people spiritually he made them backslide he made them <coughs> go against christ but now he became innocent of that kind of evil thing because he was now a real child of God. All those things of the past, everything are totally gone. Then new nature, not negligent. You are not negligent of the word of God, of the commandment of God, of the salvation of God, but <coughs> you are new, na new nature, if any man being christ is a new creature you'll be a new creature in jesus name you are enabled <coughs> you are not ensnared you see there are people they put their hands in something and they hook their hands there they want to pull it out uh -uh. you cannot come out again ensnared until christ comes and i'll enable you and all those things that ensnared your life, everything will vanish in Jesus' name. That's what it means to be holy. You're sincere now. And you are not scornful. 
They are not strong for it. You don't hear the word that calls you to repentance. And then you say, ah, what are they saying? Am I the only one doing that here? Am I the only one that has ever done that? And you seeing God, a God that will forgive, uh-huh, you're familiar now with the advocate. Or the advocate, he will forgive. So let me go ahead and do it. I will, I will change later. Let me go and do it. They are ensnared. But now, as you come, and he delivers you from the hand of your enemy, that you now serve God without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of your life. You are steadfast. You are not sinning secretly. You are steadfast. You are not sinning secretly. Our church people are not here. Okay, let's do it quickly until uh, before, uh, you know, our church members come. <laughs> that one is a secret sinner. Let's, let's take it now and let's see how to adjust everything so they will not know. That's a secret sinner, but a person who had been saved by the Lord, delivered by the Lord, he is steadfast in the Lord and is not sinning secretly. That's what the Lord wants to do for you. And the Lord will do it tonight. I said the Lord will do it tonight. You're seeing the picture of your own life. And you have seen that this is what it means when we have that notable miracle. Notable miracle of salvation. Notable miracle of restoration. And then we'll follow notable miracle of healing. He will do it today. I said he will do it today. This is the real experience of salvation of conversion, of returning totally unto the Lord. It's now your turn. And it's now your turn to say, Lord, here am I. It will happen. That good thing will happen to you. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. This is the moment of our preparation the moment to repent, the moment to turn unto the Lord, the moment to confess and forsake all the evil things, sinful things we've discovered in our heart, in our life. The things we've done openly, the things we've done privately, the things we've done secretly. Tell the Lord and say, Lord, I want your forgiveness. I want the freedom. I want the salvation. The salvation of the Lord that brings real transformation. As it's about and eyes are closed, you want this forgiveness and freedom from the Lord. Wherever you are, God bless you there. Raise up your hand. Genuine salvation. Real salvation, definite salvation, definite forgiveness, a definite cleansing from the Lord. Thank you very much, raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, please stand up wherever you are. Standing up, standing up, standing up for Jesus, standing up for real, definite experience. No more hypocrisy, no more falling and rising. No more denying of Christ. And no more just religious, religious, religious. But real salvation from the Lord. God bless you there as you are standing up. As you are standing up, please tell the Lord. Confess before the Lord and say, Lord, I've been coming before, but now I really come. I've been praying before, Lord. I really pray. I've been confessing and forsaking before, but my whole heart was not there. Lord, my heart is really there because I want that notable salvation, that notable transformation, that notable restoration. Tell the Lord.
In Jesus' name we pray. Give me a better amen over there. <clears throat> keep up that hand and keep on standing up online, anywhere you are. You've heard the word of God and you see that this is the day of your notable salvation. We're praying together now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know our hearts. You know the disposition of the heart. You know the sincerity of the heart. You know the sincere desire of this biblical salvation. I pray, Lord, you grant all your people that sincere heart to repent, to turn away from sin, and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, you forgive them definitely. You set them free supernaturally. And I pray the Spirit of God will bear witness in their heart. They are now children of God. Confirm, affirm that salvation in their hearts in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. Keep on standing. Our counselors are coming there. The choristers, members of the choir, help us at this time. Ushers, counselor, everyone, help us at this time so that we can capture the names <coughs> in good time. Our officiating minister tonight will come and lead us in this counseling period before I come back to pray for the notable healing and deliverance. Cancer us, please. I want you to please take note of where the decision makers are and reach out to them. Let's ensure those at the language section are also taken care of. And the people at the far back, counselors that are assigned to that place, please reach out to them towards the gate. Let counselors be there too. All over the camp, even at the overflow at the campground, please let the counselors there attend to those who have made decision. Get their names, their phone numbers, and everything. Please, let's have full detail. And let us write in such a way that is readable. And let's have correct address. Now that by the grace of God, you have been made a new creature, Notable miracle of salvation have taken place. You will not tell lies anymore. You give us your true address and complete phone number. And for the online brethren that made decision for Christ, those who are watching online and you gave your life to Christ after the pastor's message, this evening, there is a link, gckhq.org slash connect. Below your prayer or below the instrument you are using, visit it and fill out the form so we can assist you in your new work with Christ. Also, those who listened over the radio, in all the states where you are, you listen to the message over the radio, or you watched over the television, and you just gave your live meditation for Christ, please send your name 
to this phone number or through SMS or WhatsApp. The phone number is plus 234-915-444-9263. I take it again, plus 234-915-444-9263. Six three, all the people that listened over the radio, uh, watched on television. Please send your name, your details, your phone number to that phone number that I've just called. I will be reaching out to you, so I'll be able to send some material that will help you to continue in your newfound faith. Also, I want to remind all that gave their life to Christ from Thursday to today that there is going to be a special lunch hour fellowship with Jesus under that pavilion by 3 p.m. tomorrow, lunch hour with Jesus under the cover over there. And that is 3 p.m. tomorrow. Be here. Those who gave your life on Thursday, gave your life to Christ on Friday, Saturday, and tonight. Please be here by 3 p.m. Please, if cancerous have not gotten to where you are, please indicate. Cancerous, please, let's ensure that nobody is left out. Get to them. Get their details. If they can write, let them fill the form and return to you, and you go through. And then you hand them the converse package. They will give you the converse package that contains materials that will help you in your newfound faith. Also, there is going to be believers' banquet on Sunday. 3rd of November for all converts all over in our regions and various regional headquarters and some group headquarters that are far from the region headquarters by 4 p.m. Sunday, November 3rd. And also all over the world, the same believers' banquet we hold for all converts who gave their lives in all the locations all over the world. And also for those who gave their life online. Also, there's going to be believers' banquet with you. Please, they've not attended to you. Please cancel us, get to them. They have not attended to you, please indicate by raising your hand so that they will get to you. And if they have taken your details, they ought to hand over the pastor's package, the converse package to you, containing pastor's letter that will help you to stand. And also there are other Christian materials and pastor's book, a gift for you that will help you to stand. So those who gave their life to Christ, please let the counselors meet with you. Give them full detail. Counselors, please, let's be fast. And after counseling, please remain where you are so that you'll be able to identify the, don't come back, quiet anywhere. All counselors remain in the congregation, please. Remain in the congregation so that the people, after the miracle prayer, you'll be able to help them and identify with them and bring them to where they can give their testimony. From our far left over here, if you are finished, please, can I see the flag? Supervisor, they are finished. Okay, I see from the back over there. From the front here, 
If you have finished counseling where in your own section, please raise the flag. Okay, in the language section, they are true. Okay, in the front here, I can see you are true. Over there. Okay, at the very far back, I think we are true and we are ready tonight. There is a miracle for you. As a man of God, we come up, I want to tell you, you will never carry your problem away. Be on your feet as we welcome the man of God. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Carry go. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Healing. Amen. Deliverance. Amen. Notable miracle of healing for you in Jesus' name. Amen. You remember the man I spoke about in the Bible? He was at that gate. They carried him there. He had never seen Peter before or John before. He had never even had any testimony of miracle. But that day, his miracle came. Today, your miracle has come. We we'll mention the name of Jesus and the name and faith in that name has made this man strong, made him whole through faith in the name of Jesus. And that name has never lost its power. You need a notable miracle, notable healing, notable deliverance. Wherever you are, just raise up your hand and lay your hand in the place where you have the challenge. When you hear the name of Jesus, your miracle has arrived. Yeah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, yeah. we come before you, God of mercy, God of love, God of compassion, we're asking, touch, heal everyone in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everywhere here, to the right, to the left, to the center, online, everywhere. Notable miracle of healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Open those blind eyes. Amen. Loose the dumb tongues. Amen. Take the swelling away. Amen. Heal the paralysis. Take away the terminal disease, cancer, or anything from every life in Jesus' name. Amen. The name of Jesus, that name that can never fail. I send forth your healing to you right now. Amen. Your native miracle to you right now. Amen. And the power of the Lord touch you there. Amen. Let there be a demonstration of power in your life. Performance of miracle in your life. Yeah. A confirmation of the notable healing, observable healing, visible healing in your life right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. It's done. Check up. You see the miracle there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Great thing is going to happen in your life today. Let me tell you ahead of time, there's going to be an upliftment in your life. There's going to be an impartation in your life. Yeah. You're going to take the plane. Now, if you've been riding bicycle, you move to the next level, motorcycle. Then you move to the next level, you have a car. Yeah. But now today, your journey is so far. Your journey is so high. You have to take a plane 
from today. You will rise high. You will go far. You will do what you never dreamt you could do. And today, for you, for me, for us, in the beginning of a new level of achievement in every life. If you're the one I'm talking to, where are you? Raise up that time. Father, I pray that every failure of the past, you blot out from every life in Jesus' name. A new strength, a new vision, a new direction, a new strength and power. And Lord, I pray every sin that spells failure in any life, young people, boys, girls, students of universities, colleges, and young adults, blood failure out of every life in Jesus' name. Young adults, young professionals, here is the time now to begin to soar above. And I pray the spirit of excellence will enter everyone. We we'll begin to walk, we will not be weary. We we'll begin to run, we will not faint. We are not looking back, we are not going back. We are moving up, we are moving forward. Confirm it, Lord, in every life, here, online, everywhere, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we come this session, I'm talking to you on a unique, great privilege, empowered for excellence. Empowered for excellence. The privilege we have great privilege we have, unique privilege we have, a great, unique privilege, empowered for excellence. There's a verse in Deuteronomy, reading from chapter 8, looking at verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, reading from verse 18. It says, but thou shalt remember that thou shalt, it means you should remember that it is the Lord thy God, your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth. When we talk of wealth there, wealth in your being, your health, wealth in your profession, success, achievement, wealth in your academics, distinction. And it said, it is the Lord, thy God, that gives you the power, the strength, the energy, the backbone, the focus, the drive, is the one that gives you everything it takes that you have wealth in every area, wealth in every pursuit, wealth, success, achievement in everything you lay your hand upon. We can afford to forget the past. Your failures are buried. I didn't hear an amen. Yeah. Your defeat in the past, buried. Yeah. And all those negative things and no get negative feelings will come to bury the past right here. And now, resurrection, new life, new strength new power, new energy, new achievement, and new assignment, a new thing will be birthed in your heart today. For this unique experience, great experience we're going to have as we're empowered 
for excellence. I'm talking to you on three levels today. Number one, I'm going to talk on the teenagers, point number one. Number two, I'm going to talk to the students, college students, university students, higher institution students, point number two. Number three, I'm going to talk to the young adults, the young eagles, and the young professionals, and the ones who are between the adult life and the youth life and you are ready to do what it takes and you are going to mount up even from this very day in Jesus name number one why don't you say amen when I say in Jesus name and you know, you know, sometimes there are some flies around, and you know, the flies of discouragement and the flies of uh, failure and the flies of the past. When you shout amen like that, those flies they have ears, and when they hear a great amen, they look here and there, and those flies of defeat and flies of failure they run away from you, they never come back again. Yeah. Number one. Focused teenagers learning to lean towards excellence. Where you lean in life, where you tend to rest in life, where you look at in life, that's the direction you go. That's why number one is focused teenagers learning to lean towards excellence. Number two, foremost students. I'm talking to those who are going to take the lead in their community, in our country, in our continent, in every continent. Number two, foremost students lifted onto the ladder of excellence. There is a ladder and it has a solid wall it's leaning on and then the Lord takes you and he puts you on that ladder lifted onto the ladder of excellence number three fortified young adults empowered young adults stabilized young adults fortified young adults living and leading towards excellence fortified empowered strengthened energized enabled enabled fortified young adults living and leading towards Excellence. Look at number one there. Number one, focused teenagers. You see, my children, sons and daughters, if we're going to do anything, if we're going to run the race of life, we have to be looking in one direction. Show me a runner and show me an athlete. He want, he's running and he's looking here and looking here and he's not focused. He's not focused on the goal. How can he make it? Show me a footballer who is on the field and he's not looking at the goalpost. That's why they put the goalpost there. And that is the direction that you ought to go. And therefore, if you are playing, it might dribble it here, dribble it here. It might have the back a quarter. What was the position there? It, wherever he's playing and whatever he's doing, is focused on the goalpost. Because because he wants to score a goal. The same thing in life. If we're going to make anything, young people, teenagers, we're focused, we're learning to lean. We're learning to lean towards excellence. Look at, uh, look at Psalm 112 there, and I'm looking at verse 7. In Psalm 112, we're looking at verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. The evil tidings there, you have a lot of things happening. You know, the college is closed over there, and the school is flooded over there, and the gates are broken down over there, and the teachers, some have resigned, and some are coming in. Some of, some of the teachers are new. Some of the teachers are old. Some of the teachers, I need to pay attention to understand their intonation, and yet, 
yet all those things that appear negative, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. He shall not be jolted by evil tidings. He will not be distracted by whatever is happening. One of the students in our class had a major problem. She is not in class today. Another one, she is uh, kind of dropped out. He will not be jolted. He will not be distracted by all the news, all the things that happen. Why? His heart is fixed. His heart is fixed. Somebody in life who has an ambition fixed. He has a project fixed. And he has a mind fixed. His heart is fixed. Actually, our heart, that takes in our mind. It takes in our dream. It takes in our vision. It takes in our ambition. It takes in everything within us. And while we're focused on that thing, we know that is the goal. And when you set your mind, you set your eyes, you set your vision, and you set everything you have within you on the goal, the place you are going, you will get there. A mile at a time, a day at a time, a step at a time, a class at a time, a study at a time. One, one, one. The hour is made up of minutes. And when you spend qualitative minutes and you push everything into every minute, and then you have one hour at a time, and you have one day at a time, and you have one assignment at a time, and every time you are focused, that hour you are focused. That day you are focused in the class. Whatever you are learning, you are focused. One lesson at a time, one class at a time, one day at a time. Everybody can do that. You say, our problem concentrating. You can concentrate for one minute, concentrate for one minute. You can concentrate for one hour. You can concentrate for one class. You have that Focus, and it says, is heart, is mind, is fixed. That's it. Person is learning to lean towards excellence. There are three things I'm looking at here. Number one, number one, the passion and love for excellence. Number two, our pursuit of learning to be excellent. Number three, the perseverance of those leaning towards excellence. Three things, number one, passion, number one, number two, pursuit, and number three, perseverance. Look at number one there. Number one is the passion and love for excellence in life. We only do what we love. If you are neutral, if you don't have any love, you don't have any flair for something, you might, no okay, case, good, okay, other people can do it, but because we don't have love for it, we don't have passion for it, we don't have a burning desire for that thing, we don't get it done. Maybe you have the ability, but you don't have the love for it. You don't have the liking for it. You don't have the passion for it. You don't do it for something that you, you've seen. That I'm going over there, but I need this bridge of secondary education. I need this bridge of college education. I need this bridge of personal education and because of that I grow to love that thing I love it not for its sake 
I love it for the goal, for the sake of the goal. I want to reach. Uh, you see, do you love uh, English language? Well, as you were teaching us all to see, here and there, put the sentence together here. Here is the subject. Here is the, you know, subjunction. Here is this, the adjective. This one is the adverb. What's the difference between adverb and uh, adjective? I don't like this, you know. We have to like it. We have to have passion for it because it is what you love and you have passion for that's why the direction you are going to go and therefore you look at your subjects and the ones that are difficult you know if mathematics is the one that is difficult you don't say well i'm going to spend my time on the subjects i like i pick and choose but the one that appears difficult you say i will conquer this one somebody there i will conquer this one what are you? I will conquer this subject. You will conquer in Jesus' name. Passion, passion, passion. You love, you get to love it. And you know, sometimes you meet somebody for the first time. Maybe there's something about him about her you don't like. Something about her you don't appreciate. But as you talk together, interact together, and as you talk together, and share minds together, although you didn't like him, you didn't like her at the beginning in time, you grow to love each other and you grow to like each other. The same thing. This subject, I don't like it. This subject, I don't want to give my time to it, but take it up again and do some what we call remedial learning. The things which you have learned in the past, which you didn't really fully learn, go back to it. It will be simpler now. And then you interact with that subject, interact with the teachers, interact with the textbook, interact with the questions of the past, interact with the questions and answers of past exams. As you do that, you create passion and you create love for excellence. Look at this. somebody is uh, Daniel chapter 6 and I'm looking at verse 3. It says then this Daniel, I like that this Daniel, it says there are many kinds of Daniel and many forms of Daniel but this one that we're talking about this Daniel what's your name? I said, what's your name? All right. Mine is William. I say, this William. Say your own. Talk. This Daniel. You know, you have to get yourself out of the bunch. Get yourself out of the crowd. You know, if you're just following the crowd, it's the way they're moving and you're moving there. You don't get yourself out and be a special person. You'll be part of the crowd. But when we're able to talk about you and we say, this Daniel was preferred above the presidents, above the leaders, above the chairman, above the princes because, because because an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole realm that's what will happen to this youth to that youth excellent spirit will be in you now what's the demonstration manifestation of such an excellent spirit daniel chapter one i'm reading from verse eight it says but daniel you know all the other things they go normal all the stream flowing normal but daniel when it comes in there's a change and today from today when you're coming i said when you're coming I said when you're coming, there'll be a change. Other people have been talking failure, they're talking defeat, they're talking impossibility, and that but Daniel, as you come, thank God there's a change today. Thank God there's a transformation today. It's happening in your spirit, it's happening in your soul, it's happening in your inner man. But Daniel purposed in his heart. 
that he would not defile himself of the king with the portion of the king's meat, no, with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Now, Daniel, why? He said, because I define myself. Therefore, I will not defile myself. You have to define who you are. You have to define why you are here. You have to define why you are in college, in school. You have to define what you want to take out from here. Let not society and let not anyone defile you because it is your attitude. It is what you stand for that defines you. I now want to give you the definition I have for you. You are a boy, you are a girl of excellence. You are a student of excellence. No matter what had happened in the past, today is the beginning of a new life for every one of you. And when you define yourself a new definition, a new direction, a new decision, a new determination, now I define myself. This is the way to go. Nothing will stop you. And today I want to tell you that if you will see what gets other people down, what pins other people down, and you say, I define myself as different, as distinct, as a person that has a, de a, a destination, and I am getting there. Praise the Lord, you are getting there. Look at verse 20 there. Verse 20 says, And in all matters of wisdom, and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them, them who? Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He found them ten times better. Ten times better. I'm talking about you. Ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that were in all Israel. Look at number two there. Number two there. We're looking at the pursuit of learning and to be excellent. The pursuit, when somebody has passion, just like when you put a kettle of water on fire, maybe a stove, and then when you put a lid there, if the water is still cold or it's rising a little bit, 10 degrees Fahrenheit, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the lead on the kettle will stay there. But when it gets to boiling point, you see, that's what you need to have. That the passion you have, the love you have is rising. And the temperature is rising. And you get to that boiling point. That lead will fly out. lead that covered you up, the lead that limited you, the lead that stops the favor, the vapor from going up, that lead will fly up. It is what is in you that causes that movement that you now pursue. Passion, 
leads to pursuit. Uh, look at that one. He's not pursuing anything. Wakes up in the morning and then during the day, the whole day is gone. And uh, there's no progress. He didn't even add a mile. He didn't have a yard. He didn't add a meter to his progress. Why? There is no passion, so there's no pursuit. But when you have the passion and there's something on the inside of you boiling you will move on greater knowledge and greater achievement in jesus name look at proverbs chapter 9 i'm reading from verse 9 proverbs chapter 9 reading from verse 9 give instruction to a wise man and it will be yet wiser give instruction to a wise man you're doing well already but now you're going to do better you're doing good already, but now you're going to do better. You, you have been following a good pattern and a good speed, but now you're going to have a higher, better, greater plan in your life in Jesus' name. You see the one that said, I've learned enough. I've known enough. Why do I need to go to the next class? Why do I need to go to the next level? He's forgotten what we're told here. Give instruction to a wise man. He's already wise. He has the foundation and the basis of being wise. He will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. I pronounce that increase upon every life here today in Jesus' name. The achievement of the past is going to be like a platform. It's going to be like a springboard. You see those people that dive into the ocean, into the sea, they have, uh, uh, they walk to that, uh, pla uh, that uh, platform and then there's a spring there and then they're, you know, going up and down. They're ready to launch now and they launch into the deep. That is what we're here for. That this that you have got in the past it will be like a springboard and then you will dive into greater achievement in your life in Jesus name look at Proverbs chapter 2 and I'm reading there from verse 3 Proverbs chapter 2 verse 3 it says yea yes if thou Christ after knowledge it's like you know where's the knowledge where's the knowledge they say it's in class 2 I mean class 1 and you are crying after knowledge I'm eager to get to class two because what I'm looking for is in that class. Now you are JSS and, and you say, I want knowledge, I want knowledge. They say it's in senior secondary and you say, I am eager to go there. Everything that needs to be done, you do it now because you are crying after knowledge. I finished my secondary school but I'm still pursuing knowledge. It's a pursuit and I'm running after, I'm driving after after. You'll not allow yourself to say, you know, to take that school sat. I'm telling you, we're ready in the day, we're ready in the night. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You see that there's still knowledge. You're still not the periphery of knowledge. Because of that, you have a pursuit. And you just take this as the springboard. And you're learning to be excellent. And it says, if thou Christ after knowledge and lifted up thy voice for understanding. Then in verse 4, it tells us in verse 4, it says, if thou seekest her as silver, like other people are seeking for silver, you're seeking for knowledge, you're seeking for increase, and searchest for her as for hidden treasures. And then in verse, uh, look at uh, verse uh, four, verse 6, it says, for the Lord giveth wisdom, he'll give you wisdom. And then it says, out of his mouth cometh knowledge. He'll give you knowledge and understanding. You will have. I will have. I will have. Number one is the passion. Number two is the pursuit. Number three is the perseverance. Perseverance, that word perseverance means that you know sometimes a flesh is not stone a brain 
is not made of iron or steel. Because of that, we sometimes get tired. We sometimes get weary. And we sometimes, it's like, should I go on? Can I go on? Can I do it? And that's the time this virtue of perseverance comes in now. Perseverance is a virtue. And we're not born with perseverance. When a baby is born, if there's any need, cries. If there is any attention he wants, he cannot endure that quietness from the mother or from the family. He cries. When he cries, we are not born with perseverance. But perseverance is such an important virtue, we have to cultivate it. We have to, in cultivation, we plant, we water, and then we see we fence around what we plant so that it will grow. The same thing with perseverance. Perseverance in our lives. Number one, we plant that perseverance. How do I do that? I see those athletes. Don't they get tired? Yes, they do. But they keep on running. They keep on running. They persevere. They neglect their pain. They overlook their pain. They overlook their tiredness because they know they are in a race and they want to get to the destination. And then when you see them, if he can do it, I can do it too. If he can pursue, I can pursue too. If he can achieve, I can achieve too. You see the doctor, prof, that spoke to us at the beginning. You see where he was. You see where he did. There will be times of discouragement. There will be times of tiredness. There will be times when the person will say, Why am I born in this locality? Why am I growing up in this local government? Why am I going through all this? But he made use of is intelligence, intellect, mind, and then uh, if he's to get a kind of old machinery, I'll get it. If he's to do something uh, very minimal and small to remain alive, I'll do it. And if it is to go for a kind of a training that is not full time but part time, I'll do it. He gets tired, he gets weary. He gets unhappy when he compares all the people that are having it easy in life. It will come like that. But it is when you say, I will persevere. I will move on. I will endure. And I will go through whatever I need to go through. And you persevere like other people have persevered. You will have that and then you're not sure that, you're not sure that. What we hear, we practice. What we hear, somebody said he persevered, and it's the way he did it, and I will do it. And then you're not sure that it begins to grow. But then you must understand what we lose. If you allow perseverance to get to the level I've endured enough, I have run enough, I have gone that way enough. I have fought my tiredness enough. You see, when you stop, everything will be going down. You have to have opportunities every day to persevere. As something comes, you've overcome tiredness in that area, and you've overcome weariness in that area. Another area comes now. You are getting tired. You are not give up. Today, you must persevere. Tough, you must persevere because when tough times come, tough people keep on persevering. But the people that say it's tough and because it's tough, I'm going back home. I can't do anything anymore. Tough times come and tough people, tough teenagers persevere. You'll persevere. I said you'll persevere. 
Yeah. And look at this. Look at Proverbs chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 14. It says, For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain thereof, the fine gold. Do you see businessmen, how they persevere? Do you see the people who are running after sales? How do you persevere? I, I knock on that door as a salesman. And the fellow there opened the door and said, what do you want? S tell me in a minute. And then you put on a smile. You say, I came to tell you of, uh, something that just came out. It just uh, produced and it will give you a better life. It will be a happier life. It will make everything easier for you. The things you'll not be able to do in the household. I bring you this commodity and, and, and with a smile, you, you say, come on in, come on in. You need more than one minute, you see. If at the time that, you know, it came in and the fellow said, uh-huh, one minute, what do you have? If anyway, smile. If it's not, uh, you know, kind of attractive, and they'll send him back from there. Whatever the world is doing against you, the world frowns against you. The world opposes you. The world criticizes you. And the world puts you down. And the world denies you the opportunity you ought to have. You persevere. And as you persevere, things will change for the better in my life. In my life. Things will change for the better in Jesus' name. Look at verse 15 there. In verse 15, she is more precious than rubies. He's talking about knowledge. He's talking about understanding. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Look at Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29. Proverbs chapter 22. We're looking at verse 29. It says, Seest thou a man? You can put your name there. Seest thou a woman? Seest thou a boy? Seest thou a girl diligent in his business? Diligent, not in other people's business. Mind your own business. Mind your own business. Now, when they tell us that, we shouldn't be offended. He's saying, why are you prognosing? Why are you trying to change something that does not belong to your realm and to your area? Why are you trying to help other people and you're not helping yourself? Mind your business. I will mind my own business. I will mind my own business. I will study my own books. I will do my own homework. I will do my own assignment. I will fill my own form. I will seek admission to the college I want to get to. I will mind my own business. It says, seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. I say amen for you. Amen. Look at number two now. Point number two, we're looking at foremost students lifted onto the ladder of excellence. The Lord will take you from where you are now and you're going to the top in Jesus' name. Samuel chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 8. For Samuel chapter 2, we're reading from verse 8. He, the God of heaven, the God of the power that never fails, he raises up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dunk hill to set them among princess. That's what he's going to do to you and for you today. He will lift you up from the dust. He lifts you up from the basement of your profession. 
And you'll not all the time, every time you come, they direct you to the basement. And there you are. For many years now, the basement of your school, the basement of your education, the basement of your profession. They say, okay, you know, you know your place now. Your seat is over there. But today, the Lord is going to remove your seat from the basement. And it's going to take you to the highest level and the top story of that apartment, of that place, in Jesus' name. Because it says, he raises up the poor and the beggar out of the donkey to search them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. Look at verse 9. In verse 9, he says, He will keep the feet of his saints, and the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength shall no man prevail. Enemies will not prevail over you. And the people that stand at the crossroad, at the way, whether you will get up or not, before you get to that crossroad, the Lord will clear them up for you. Yeah. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at the foundation of leaders like British for excellence. The leaders that God himself like breeds for excellence. We have a foundation. What can the righteous do if the foundation be destroyed? Number two, the formation of lives lifted to excellence. And number three, the friend's loyalty on the ladder towards excellence. Look at number one. Number one is the foundation of leaders like British for excellence. We're looking at uh, Psalm 11, reading from verse 3. It says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, think about that in our own context. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the diligent, determined students and uh, future leaders what can they do? We have to keep the foundation. Have you noticed when you have the foundation of the times table? Two times two, two times three, two times four. And then you come to six times seven, and six times eight. And then you come to 12 times 11, and 12 times 12 foundation. As you move to the next class, you don't throw the times table away that I'm now in college, I don't need time. Yes, you still need that. That's foundation. And then when you go to university, and when you are in the polytechnic, and anywhere you are, you don't throw that foundation away and say, that's a you know, foundation. That's two times two, that's three times four, and that is five times ten. Now, that foundation still has to be there. And even when you have graduated, you become a professor, you cannot throw the timetable away and say that, you know, that one is elementary. We keep Keep the foundation. The same thing in our learning. The rudimentary things that we have learned. And because of the rudiments we have learned. And we keep that foundation. So that to build and to do anything. We still need to measure. And we still need to put the plumb line there. And it's the foundation that will help us. That's why it says if the foundations be annulled. Destroyed taking away. The foundation is no more there. What can the engineer do? What can the doctor do? And what can the nurses do? What can the tailors do? What can those professionals do? If the foundation, the basic knowledge they learned at the beginning, if they throw that away, that means that whatever we're doing now, whatever we're do, wherever we are now, we keep that 
foundation. And then when it comes to the moral life, to the spiritual life, to the religious life, we have the foundation. And if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 19 here. It says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Nevertheless, the basic understanding we have that God is and that God still remains today, and that God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. That foundation, the foundation of God stand sure. The foundation of the love of God. The love of God for you, for me, to, for everyone. The foundation of God stand sure. The foundation he hates evil because he's a good God. He hates unrighteousness because he's a righteous God. He hates anything that will hurt your neighbor because he's the God of all creation. The God of all flesh. We need to keep that foundation. And it says, nevertheless, if the foundation, the foundation of God standeth sure, have been the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let every man, every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. I need a good amen. amen. We're coming to number two here. Number two here is the formation of lives lifted to excellence. God wants to lift you up. And today, he will lift you up. Amen. Where are you there? God bless you there. Because he is the God who forms us and reforms us, who changes us, and then he makes something better out of our lives. Now, in the formation, if you're forming something, have you looked, looked at uh, those people uh, that, you know, they make the pots, they make the cups, they make the plates and all that, and, and they, do, they go through the process of formation. Look at that clay, just a lump of clay. And then they will break down that clay. They will soften that clay. Then they'll have a pattern uh, for the mulch of that clay. And eventually, when everything comes out, they'll pass it through the heat and through some fire. It becomes solid now, and they put some decorations on of what they have made. That's what God does. There is a process of forming us. And he will, you know, he formed us originally, but sin deformed us. Education tries to reform us, but it's not enough. It takes the hand of God that formed us originally to now reform us and refashion us and do something that will become a brand new creature. Amen? Amen. And then uh, you also now begin uh, to form and to make the things in your life. Look at Proverbs chapter 24. I'm looking at verse 27. In Proverbs 24, verse 27, prepare thy work without. Prepare thy work without. What does that mean? You have a work to do. Prepare thy work without. As we, you know, as you know, for children, we're going to school. And the previous night, I'll be going to school tomorrow morning. And so I pick my exercise book, I pick my textbook, and I put everything in my bag ready to go. You're preparing outside tomorrow. You're preparing today what you'll need tomorrow. And now you go to the next level. You prepare your work, you prepare your studies, you prepare your personality without that is outside next month outside next year today you are preparing outside next year you are preparing for next year now you have finished school and you now want to go for a particular profession you prepare yourself outside that profession i want to be a doctor aha uh -huh. what subjects will i need 
What lessons will I need? I want to be at whatever profession you can mention yours. I want to be that. What do I need now to prepare to get over there? We we'll prepare ahead of time. You see, there are people, they live from day to day, no preparation no formation of anything the day comes and then they are here today what do i do today what am i going to have today you have to prepare ahead of time don't you see this program this program was said on saturday the 26th of november we're going to have the empowerment for excellence for youth before this saturday came were prepared. All the things we're going to do, we're going to have, we have to prepare. That's how life works. You have to look at the future. You have to look at what is ahead of you, and you prepare ahead of time. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself. Make it fit for thyself. I'm going to run, and the shoes I wear, they have to fit. They fit me, and they fit the race, because a slippers will not do, and a real shoe will not do, therefore I have to have what will do. You want to play the tennis, and then you have to have the real bat you ought to have, and everything, and sharp eyesight, and you need to know how to attack that, how to get back that. You see, we prepare everything, but if you don't prepare, how do I prepare? I practice, I practice, I practice, I'm going for one game, and I practice a thousand times so that my body, my sight, my bending, everything is used to what I want to do. That's how life is. That you're always preparing yourself up toward build thine house. Then you'll be able to build a profession now and then also you'll prepare yourself. Some people say, I'm going to heaven, going to heaven. And I say, what preparation are you making? <laughs> they want need to prepare. I just want to get to heaven. Everything needs preparation. Everything on earth everything in the great beyond will prepare. You repent of your sin. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You take him as your Lord and Savior and then by the grace of God, you will get there. Amen. I will get there. Look at number three here. Number three, we're looking at the friend's loyalty on the ladder towards Excellence, the key, the, the friend's loyalty on the ladder for excellence. And you know what? If we're going to go through life and we're going to make it, we cannot be a lone ranger. We need love, we need understanding, we need help, a helping hand. And it is all that that our friends will. Friends will come, and those friends will help us so that we get to the place we need to get to. Look at Proverbs chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. It's a two-way traffic. You to your friend, and your friend to you. That if you want a smile from him, from her, you smile. If you want a helping hand from him, from her, you give the helping hand. If you want joy and happiness and satisfaction from him, you give that to you because it's a two, it's a two way um, traffic. It says, a friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. Now, what kind of friend should I have? What kind of friend should you have that will help you? That will make you to go on in the journey that the Lord has given you. Now, I want to ask, the, ask it like a question. Who is your friend? How is your friend? Number one, you see, agreeable or aggressive. You see somebody always again, always wanting to beat you down, aggressive in even towards you. You see, agreeable or aggressive. B, you see brotherly or brutish. Beast. The way he talks, 
And the way he pounces upon somebody, you see, brotherly and nice and friendly or brutal. See, you see, courageous or cowardly. The friends we have, the one that is cowardly, is not able to do anything. There's always difficulty there. There's always danger there. There's always, uh, you know what, I cannot handle that. You see, cowardly. D, you see, disciplined or a derelict. You see, a disciplined person, he knows when to talk. He knows when not to talk. He knows how to relate. He is disciplined. And he considers how you will feel, how you will think. He considers what impact and what effect, what he says and what he does. Is he exemplary or exploitative? Exemplary. Exemplary in love. Exemplary in helping. Exemplary in being considerate. Or you see exploitative, just wanting to exploit you, to get something out of you. You always get and you always sucks it out without you having any benefit. You see, focused or flirting, your friend, the one you choose as your friend, what kind of friend would this be? Will this one be able to get you to where you want to go? You see, godly or Godless. You need to think about that. The kind of friends you have uh, and the people you are going on with, we don't just want to have any friend. It's a friend that will love us, a friend that will lift us up, a friend that will get us to where we're going. Each, you see, helpful or harmful. It's a friend. It's a friend. And when you are planning on doing something and you want to get here, get there, it's hurtful. It's harmful. And it's hindering you from getting where you ought to get. It's like it's not happy with your progress. It's not happy with the increase. It's not happy with going on. With you going on the ladder of excellence, helpful or harmful. I now, is he I, is he industrious or idle? Now, he also always wants to talk, wants to talk, wants to talk. You want to read, he wants to talk. You want to do assignment, he wants to talk. And you want to, you know, check off that internet and see how to go further. You are industrious, you are always on the move, and you are a go-getter. But it's your friend, an idle one. You see, just or jealous. That French is just, he considers.